In this video, we're jumping into Ecclesiastes chapter 9, and we'll be confronted by the realities of life and death. And the sermon that I preached on this section I called, If Only I Could Enjoy Life More. If you're new to this channel, I encourage you to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and share this content with others you think might find this helpful. If you haven't already done so, take some time to read this passage a few times for yourself. Reading and rereading a passage is the best way for you to start to get your head around what's going on in the passage. And also, if you haven't yet done so, take some time to pray. Pray that God would open your eyes to understand His truth, because this is truth for us today that will shape the way that we live our lives under the sun, knowing the reality that one day our days under the sun will come to an end. Now, it's important for us to see the structure of this section, which will help us to get to grips with what's going on here. And these first six verses are the first big section. And then in the middle here, uh, we're given, in many ways, the meat of this section, which is then followed by 11 to 12. Now, in many ways, this is like uh, a hamburger. You, you've got your roll on either side of the meat of the structure. And what we're going to see in these first six verses is that Mr. Teacher is going to show us that there is a common destiny for all people. So verses 1 to 6 will show us this one certainty. In verses 11 to 12 will show us that life has many uncertainties. And sandwiched in between, we are told to enjoy the simple things of life. Now, in Ecclesiastes so far, we've seen a number of these kinds of statements. Uh, they are what are known as the carpe diem statements, calling us to seize the day. But before we look at that, let's just have a look at some of the repetition, the key ideas that we see in this section. Uh, we see he starts here and he says, so I reflected and literally this is I laid to heart all of this. All of this is pointing us back to what we've seen so far in the book. He's reflecting on all of these under-the-sun realities. Everything that happens under the sun. And so it's important for us to remember that he, he's giving us a horizontal view of life. And he's laying all of these things to heart. He's reflecting on them. And he reflects on realities in the hearts of people. And he calls us to live with a joyful heart. There's a bit of a repetition on this idea that of things that nobody knows. And particularly when you're dead, the dead know nothing. After you're dead, there is no knowledge. Moreover, no one knows when the hour will come. Now, that is a, a key repeated a theme, this when their hour will come, is talking about the time of death. And we see this in verse 2 here, all share a common destiny. Verse 3, the same destiny. They are going to join the dead. That's the big theme in these opening six verses, this common destiny this one certainty, everyone dies. We see here again a repetition of death. We meet a dead lion. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. And again, we see this realm of the dead mentioned in within this carpe diem, seize the day section. But this one certainty of life is that everyone will, sooner or later, join the dead. There's a bit of repetition about the things that are good and the things that are bad. Here we see a live dog is better off than a dead lion. 
Uh, just a quick note on this. So in the ancient world, a dog was not a pet like they are today. A dog was a despised, unclean scavenger. Uh, today we might think of a rat scurrying around in a dirty alley. So what he's saying is a live dog, so a live, unclean scavenger is better off than a dead lion. Now a lion back then was the king of the beasts, but if a lion's dead, he's dead. So a live dog would be better off than him. And we also see some more repetition of something we've seen in Ecclesiastes a bit so far about uh, wisdom or knowledge, the wise. But what we see here, as, as we've said, there's this one certainty, death. But then these last few verses, the other side of our hamburger, uh, says that life has many uncertainties. Things aren't always as simple as we might like them to be. The race isn't always won by the fast guy. The strong guy doesn't always win the battle. Uh, wise people don't always eat. Uh, brilliant people don't always have wealth. Life is uncertain. As fish are caught in a net or birds are taken in a snare, so people are trapped by evil times that come unexpectedly upon them. Many things in life are unexpected, or unpredictable, he says here, time and chance happen to them all. What he wants us to hold tightly to is the fact that uh, we are not in complete control of our destiny. And in a world in which people love to be in control, that's not a happy truth for many people. We are not fully in control. Time and chance, from an under the sun perspective, many of the things that happen in our world appear to simply be by chance. But Mr. Teacher does acknowledge that everything that people do is in God's hands. And here he says God has already point, appointed or approved of what you do uh, in this meaningless life that God has given you under the sun. So although he is looking at life from an under the sun perspective, he does have this reality knowing that God is ultimately the one in charge. And he says here in this meaningless life, and just remember again that that word is better translated as enigmatic. Life is enigmatic. It's hard to grab a hold of and nail down. It's like a mist. The very important thing to see is that although death is certain and many things in life are uncertain, this role on the either side of the meat of this pas passage, what we see in the center here is that there are a whole lot of imperatives that are urging us to enjoy life with gladness. Now, this section is full of imperatives. It starts with the big imperative. That's a, a verb. That is a command. Go. There's another imperative. Eat. Another imperative, drink. Another imperative, enjoy. Another imperative, do. Go, eat, drink, enjoy, do. Make the most of life. And here these ideas of being clothed in white and anointing your head with oil are signs of joy. In the ancient world, they would dress in white because in that hot climate, uh, the white clothes would reflect the sun away, keeping the person cool, and they would keep their skin from drying out by having uh, oil on their heads. And these are symbolic of joy. In our culture, we might wear bright clothes or be neatly manicured and have a smile on our face to show that we are joyful. And that's what he's calling for here. In the face of the reality of death and the uncertainties of life, he's actually commanding us, go and enjoy life. And what we will see is that these commands to be glad, to be joyful, are actually commands to enjoy the simple things of life. Enjoy food. Enjoy drink. Enjoy life with your wife. We are made to relate. If you're married, enjoy life with your spouse. If you're not married, 
enjoy life with those who are around you. We're meant to do life together. Uh, we are created relational. And by our relationships with one another is one of the ways that we help each other to truly enjoy life under the sun. He brings in this theme of our toilsome labor. Our work here under the sun is toilsome, but he says, enjoy it. Do it with all your might. Mr. Teacher wants us to see that this certainty of death shouldn't paralyze us and cause us to not live. The uncertainties of life also shouldn't paralyze us and cause us not to live. Actually, he's urging us to make the most of life. And actually, we see this throughout the Bible. In the Psalms, we often hear the psalmist calling the people to sing with joy and enjoy the life that God has blessed them with. In Paul's letters, in Philippians 4, we are told to rejoice in the Lord always. In 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, we're told a similar thing. As Christians, one of the things that we are meant to be marked by is joy. Now, we have even more reason to be joyful than Mr. Teacher did, because we face death with even more certainty than what Mr. Teacher did, because we know that our Lord Jesus came to take the sting out of death. And so I think a really important passage to go to in this section is 1 Corinthians 15, verse 54 to 57, where we are told that Jesus has taken the sting out of death. Now you could also go to John chapter 11, verse 25 to 26, where Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Death is not the end. Jesus has taken the sting out of death. He rose from the dead, and those who trust in him will rise too. So we have great and glorious hope for the future, but we don't just sit around waiting for that future. We're actually meant to make the most of this life under the sun, to go and eat our food with gladness and drink wine with a joyful heart, to be clothed in white, so to be joyful. Enjoy life with your wife whom you love. All these meaningless days, all these enigmatic days of life that God has given you under the sun. For this is your lot in life. We've seen that repeated too. In your, and in your toilsome labor under the sun. He's saying, enjoy work as a gift. Good food, simple food is a gift from God. A drink is a gift from God. Relationships are a gift from God. Your work is a gift from God. And do all of these things with joy, even though life under the sun won't always be easy. In the face of the certainty of death and the uncertainties of life, we are called to enjoy life to the fullest, to see these days that God has given us as a gift from him. Today is a gift from God. Use it in a way that will bring glory to him. And actually, only those who know that the sting of death has been taken by Jesus will truly enjoy these days in a way that will bring glory to the great gift giver. We aren't only to enjoy the gifts. The gifts are meant to point us to the one who gave those gifts. And we want to live our lives in a way that will bring glory to him, knowing that death is coming, Knowing that life is uncertain because of our sinfulness, we trust in Jesus who came to deal with sin, to deal with our sin, and to deal with death. And so in this life, we can enjoy the simple things as we long for that day when we will be with Jesus. So make the most of today. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go. Eat your food with gladness and drink your wine with a joyful heart. For God has already approved of what you do. And God has preordained that we should enjoy food and enjoy all the gifts that he gives us. And he wants us to enjoy these things in a way that will bring glory to him. So as you dig further into this wonderful passage, I pray that God would help you to see and understand wonderful truths about life under the sun. Yes, it is hard. 
but we can enjoy it as a good gift from God. And I pray that this perspective will help all of us to enjoy our lives in a way that will bring glory to our great God. Well, God bless as you dig in further.